Well, here we are, folks, at the opening of the Lodge Museum of Cast Iron. So we're going to get ready and check this out. Are you guys ready to go? We're going to walk through here and see what this is all about. We ran into a couple friends of ours. This is Culinary Dude. He's on Instagram mainly, him and his wife. So we're happy to meet them and, and uh, be able to walk through this museum and check it out with them. So here we go, folks. All right, well... As we move through here, I mean, they've got a humongous display of all the different types of pieces of cast iron that they've made over the years. I mean, that's an awesome display of everything uh, that you can imagine from skillets to griddles to, uh, oh my goodness, there's baking pans, there's loaf pans, there's griddles. And as we move on over here, as you can see, this is a display of uh, a lot of their cornbread festival skillets. So that's a pretty cool little display set up here for the different sizes, different shapes, different years of the cornbread festival. We were here last uh, April for the 25th cornbread festival, but somebody has painted their uh, skillet. I'd like to have one that's painted like that. Well, they have a sign here on the wall for the coming soon, Big Bad Breakfast. It's gonna be a restaurant where you can come here to the outlet mall in the museum and you'll be able to get breakfast and lunch so we're looking forward to when that happens they have their little kiosk set up here where uh, a little animated deal to kind of show uh, the process of the raw materials and how they melt those down into uh, making cast iron then we move over here we come into the molding area where kind of shows the display here of how they mold the cast iron then there's a pouring section here where they pour the the cast iron and then the shakeout area here where once the cast iron is made they run it through these big drums and uh, they have little pieces of metal that they run through with that to help knock off any slag or any jagged pieces and it kind of smooths the cast iron out they don't do any grinding or sanding of cast iron uh, like some of the cast iron years ago. Some of the manufacturers used to sand a lot of their cast iron down, but uh, Lodge uses these uh, little pieces to round off any rough edges. And then once you move out of the shakeout area, then you got the shot blasting here. And then as it moves on out, you can see the, the raw, untreated, unseasoned cast iron. I guess they do a little bit of grinding, but not a whole lot. This is a grinding section. I guess they grind the uh, actual handles a little bit. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. And then it comes out of the grinding area and then they come into the washing area where they wash the cast iron. And uh, here's the little trivets, little pieces that they use to help grind some of that off. As you can see the process here of how it's uh, poured into the uh, pieces of cast iron to help kind of smooth out any rough edges or uh, any sharp edges or anything like that. Pieces of slag. And then it moves on in uh, from the washing area. Then they get uh, put on the drying area. And then from there it's moved into the seasoning, the pre-seasoning we call it, seasoning area. And it takes them about sign says about five minutes through that and then it's moved on into conveyor belt and uh, it's drip dried and moved on out to the shipping and receiving area to the to the packaging and uh, then they package everything up and get it ready to ship to uh, the retail stores or to individual customers or wherever it may be shipped to even internationally overseas wherever lodges uh, uh, pretty much available everywhere. As we move on over here, they've got a little display here where they're showing how to uh, do certain recipes. Uh, they're working on, uh, earlier we've seen some biscuits and gravy and some fajitas and everything. But here's some of the other uh, different pieces of equipment. They've got grill baskets up here that you can use on a charcoal grill or a gas grill to keep your um, either vegetables or whatever from falling through the grill. There's the new Lodge Sportsman's Grill that we have. We made a video of that. Then there's the uh, Lodge Cook-It-All that's on the, on the stand. The Lodge Kickoff Grill that they have displayed here. We made a video of that. And then here's all their Camp Dutch ovens 
uh, you know, your camp Dutch ovens always have three legs on the bottom. And uh, so they've got these where they're stackable uh, from about a 14 inch all the way up to about an 8 inch. Here's a display wall of fact or fiction myth busters or myth rusters it says. Uh, different things about uh, can you use cast iron on a glass top stove, uh, is your cast iron ruined if it rusts, uh, various things like that. Can you use soap, uh, is your cast iron unbreakable different things like that. So they've got a lot of things, the myth busters here that, uh, about soap. And of course, Lodge says you can use a little bit of mild detergent, which is not like the old lye based soap of years ago, because lye will definitely strip your cast iron seasoning, but mild detergent does not. Here they have a display of the wok. Here's the sportsman's grill that we have, the new, new version of the Sportsman's Pro, it's called. And then as we move on over here, we have a lot of the signature pieces for different companies. There's one for Jack Daniels. There's Ducks Unlimited. Uh, you got Bass Pro, John Deere. My goodness, they've got all kinds of stuff. There's the United We Stand skillet. Uh, the Great Smoky Mountains it was made in 2016. K. Paul's Grateful Dead even has a, a signature piece here. So, Tabasco. Uh, there's several others here that Alabama. Brian Foods, Tabasco, I said that. Uh, so, very interesting of all the logos and commemorative signature pieces that Lodge makes for, for different companies and different events. And as we move over here to this other kiosk, we've got Yellowstone. Hey, they just come out with a new skillet uh, for the Yellowstone movie, the Yellowstone series. So that can be purchased. Here we are back over here at the Mythbusters wall, and Teresa's going to demonstrate this. Uh, you, can, you can use cast iron on a glass top stove, and when she slides the skillet back, it says, as a fact, Lodge cast iron is perfectly safe for use on various heat sources, including glass top stoves. Um, simple handle, simply handle with care on the stove top. Do not slide and always remove from the stove top after cooking. And so, then they have one here about metal, using metal. Uh, and then this one's about rust. It says, while rust can happen, uh, it can easily be removed. Simply scrub the area with steel wool, wash and re-season your pan. To prevent rust from returning, dry promptly after each use and finish with a light layer of cooking oil. There you go. There's the, I'm sorry, and then the one. metal utensil says cast iron uh, is the most durable metal uh, you'll ever cook with. That means any utensil is welcome, silicone, wood, and even metal. And then we have one here that says can you cook... Uh, with acidic or alkaline foods and cast iron and small quantities of these foods are just fine to cook in um, brand new cookware but large amounts of very acidic or alkaline foods can break down the seasoning when cooked for extended periods of time if that happens just reseason it and of course here your cast iron cookware uh, is unbreakable and the fiction is cast iron is incredibly durable but it's not indestructible. Keep in mind that cast iron will break before it bends and should be treated with care like any other piece of cookware. So there you have all the Mine myths. Mine didn't break and, when I hit you on the head. Yeah. And then of course, like I said, here's, they got a little voting booth here of whether no soap or soap. And so you can put your chip in of which one you're voting for. And she's voting for soap because cast iron can use a little bit of mild detergent if you so choose but you don't have to but you can and it won't destroy your seasoning very little dawn very little yep. okay here they have a little display where you can put in your story about your experience with cast iron mrs cast irons over here putting hers in say hello teresa hello. so she's putting hers in as we move on along over here in another section of the museum, uh, they have a large display here of all the different manufacturers from times past 
there's uh, down here they got Birmingham Stove and Range, they've got Wagner, Griswold, there's Wapak or Waypak, however you say that. Uh, there's favorite cast iron up there, uh, Erie, Griswold, Wagner, and so many things here of the old cast iron manufacturers that used to be here in the United States. And of course we know Lodge is one of the uh, last remaining, or at least the oldest uh, remaining manufacturer of cast iron today. There's other manufacturers here in the United States, but Lodge is the oldest one. And they have this humongous display here uh, of different types of food from Appalachian cooking, soul food cooking, uh, and various things displaying that. And these little kiosks here where they set up, all you have to do is touch the actual piece of cast iron and Hi, then a... a uh, tutorial will come up with one of the uh, members of Lodge teaching about how to cook with that particular piece and uh, this lady here has a uh, pie pan so and they have these set up all over uh, this one here is for baking they got one over there for frying and we've looked at several others already uh, but as you move around they have uh, how you can create a cookbook if you so choose to and uh, Man, this is just amazing at all the stuff that they have in here as displays and little kiosks. But it's just, it's just amazing at all the stuff that they have here in this Lodge Museum. And I just hope if you have a chance to get over here that you do come check this out because uh, you can spend a lot of time in here looking. And... Here's one thing that you may have seen going down the interstate is this large, humongous cast iron skillet. And the dimensions for it is it's 12 feet in diameter, it's 18 feet long from handle to handle, and it's two and a half feet deep. So you could cook a lot of bacon and eggs in that baby right there, that's for sure. And then over here, as we move around, I'll get back to this large skillet here in just a little bit. But you see the history of cornbread and you see the different things, how Lodge has played a part. Uh, there's a lid to a cast iron skillet, but it just says that corn is Native Americans uh, made sapone upon, I don't even know what some of this is, somp, succotash, Rockahominy forms of bread, porridge, and a combination of dishes that became fixtures in the diet of the immigrant population and are known now by such names as ash cake, hoe cake, corn dodgers, compone, or corn pone, corn bread, and big hominy and hominy grits. I just love my grits. I love corn bread. I love it all. <laughs> There's some of the different types of flour. Here we are back over here where you tell your cast iron story and they've actually added this to a display uh, that Teresa made for talking about her cast iron story. Said mom always made the best fried chicken for our family. I have so many great memories sitting at the kitchen table with my three brothers, mom and dad fighting over the wishbone. I now have her lodge cast iron skillet it fills my heart with warm memories and love each time I use it. So that's really cool that they have this set up here where people can actually uh, type in their uh, memories and their cast iron story and they display it here on the screen. You know, we're back over here at the uh, lodge skillet, the big skillet, and I forgot to tell you exactly how much this thing weighs, but it weighs 14,360 pounds. And they've got a display here of how they went about making this uh, and everything that it took to make this skillet. The molten iron was next, and once the skillet cooled down, its final weight was 14,360 pounds. The skillet was removed from the sand mold and cleaned up in a shark house. Then it was ground by hand to make it look nice and shiny. Here we are, we move into another section. Uh, this is actually the Generations of Lodge, and so this is going to be pretty interesting. 
Here we've got Mrs. Cast Iron over here with uh, Joseph Lodge. Uh, he's a handsome fella, isn't he? Yes, he's good looking. Look at that. So it's got a little bit of information here about uh, when he left home at 15 years old to search for work to support his family. And so that goes on and tells a little story about that. That's very interesting. And as we move over here to this next display cabinet, they have uh, basically some of the early history uh, of any of the adventures of Joseph Lodge. And then we move on over and we got a little bit of the uh, uh, history of the Civil War South and things that were taking place. And then we got a little table here set up in the middle that talks a little bit about the original Blacklock foundry and how it was located. Basically a little model of what it actually looked like at the time. We'll look at that old cast iron skillet, deep skillet and little lid. Christ Church Episcopal and it's my understanding that that church is still here in town open and uh, you can actually go in uh, to the actual church that he went to church at. Joseph H. Blacklock, Reverend Joseph Blacklock. And then as we move into another room here, they have uh, the second generation of the lodges, different information about the Blacklock foundry. Times during the Great Depression, kind of tells a little bit about that, how the sales dwindled during the Depression. They made different kinds of cast iron pieces, gnomes and cats and different trinkets there. Depression was a tough time. And uh, then we have a little bit of a replica of a piece that pours the hot iron. As you can see, this picture here is actually one of actual of a man actually using one. Then we move on down a little bit. We've got the third generation of Lodge and uh, of course the Kellerman brothers. Uh, they've got a display here of valued employees, so they honor their employees. Actually, this lady right here, Teresa and I met her at uh, the museum here in town there and we got a chance to talk with her. Can't remember what her first name, Marge, wasn't it? Mar Miss Marge. Yeah. Anyway, we got to meet her and talk to her a little bit yesterday. That was very interesting. And then as we move on, we see how they expanded the foundry. They've got some of the shovels, I guess it was probably breaking ground. Look at this skillet here of the first pour of the Third Street Foundry after they reconstructed the foundry after the original Blacklock Foundry burnt. Move into the fourth generation, family owned. And then they've got another display here of several things uh, with cast iron skillets, different kind of kits that you can get. Uh, fajita kit, uh, different Cajun cast iron. Uh, actually talk about the skillet and the egg logo. In 73, that logo was created and of course it's trademarked. Got the different little booklets that come with a lot of these pieces of cast iron. When you buy a piece of cast iron now, it will have some kind of piece of shipping on it, which may probably look a little more like some of these down here. Here's Mr. Bob Kellerman. Oh, no, that's Miss Marge right there. Here's one that doesn't have a name on it. Made by the Hunter Molding Equipment. This one has a Y for the Molder Mark. Yeah, one she was the one we met. Well, if you go to any restaurant anywhere, and he's got a piece of cat sign that has the teardrop head, mm -hmm. I like this one. Immediately you want to pick it up and look to see what's on the bottom. Does it say lodge? Then as we move on through, we get to the fifth generation uh, lodge. There she is again, right there. She is actually a sister to Mr. Bob Kellerman. This is Bob Jr., to my understanding. This is the lady we met at the museum. That's her brother. This is their dad right here, and I guess that may be another brother or grandson. I'm not sure. The museum was the South Pittsburgh Museum. Yeah, the museum, South Pittsburgh Museum here in town. 
where we met her. And then, as we see, this is called the Legacy Vault. And as you can see, the vault door here. And so they've got that set up where you can go into the vault. And here we see a lot of the old black lock pieces from the old foundry. Here's a 12 inch black lock spider skillet. Uh, 10 inch black lock. Here's a, here's a uh, kettle uh, that you see a kettle on our, a lot of our videos, but it's nothing, it's not like this at all. That's certainly an old one right there. Uh, here's some irons, cast iron irons, sleeve irons. Here's some ledgers of shipping and transfer. Uh, accounts receivable and payable ledgers. Here's uh, Tennessee, State of Tennessee Charter of Incorporation paperwork that they have on hand here. And so, and then as we move on over here, we see this humongous safe. And of course it has uh, various things in it as well. And this other display here is some of the older lodge pieces. Boy, I wish I had some of those. And uh, some of them I do have, but not near as many as I'd like. Big old saucepans. You hardly ever see these saucepans anymore like this, but. And then there's a little ladle. Here you got a roaster oven. And uh, there's a larger roaster, roaster oven. And of course, saucepans and, and uh, different things here. Some skillets. And lids and different things. Here's some actual books catalogs really those are lodge catalog books and here as we move over here this is some of the patterns and match plates that they use to make their molds out of the mold patterns and there's all kinds of stuff for every kind of skillet and dutch oven and signature pieces even these are from the home of elizabeth and joseph lodge it says oh they come out of their their home okay now as we move back over here to this particular display here, this is a cast iron collector community. There's a lot of cast iron collectors in this world, me being one of them. Uh, it says Harold Henry there has over 5,000 pieces of cast iron, lives in Hamilton, Missouri, 5,000 pieces of cast iron. This gentleman over here, Joel Schiff from New York, has over 10,000 pieces of cast iron and then here Mr. and Miss Larry Marge O'Neill have over 13,000 pieces of cast iron. I don't feel so bad with my amount of pieces. <laughs> He's running out of room. I'm running out of room. I bet they had to build him a barn and a shed. Here's his room, Harold Henry's room. Look at that. Here's a display of Harold Henry's it's addictive to me. Hmm. So, that's how we're having to store ours. Well, folks, this is the end of our tour. We hope you've enjoyed this. There's so much to see at the Lodge Museum. If you get a chance to get over there and check that out, I know they've got a lot of changes coming soon. So be sure and check it out. From Mr. and Mrs. Cast Iron, you guys have a great day. We'll see you. Bye-bye.